What's up softball players? Today's video is for catchers and we're gonna talk about ways you as a catcher can make your pitcher better and things that are really critical for you to understand as part of this pitcher catcher team. Great catchers are really special people. They're really smart, they know the game, and they, they're very good observers at what their pitcher is doing, what their pitcher looks like when they're not doing so well, their mechanics, their demeanor, your relationship, all this good stuff. So let's talk about it. So number one, as a catcher in fast pitch, you need to understand their mechanics as best you can. This way you know what's happening when they're running rough why they're throwing up in the zone too much, what happens when you know their drop ball isn't very sharp, what happens when they're missing over here too much or over here too much. When you start to understand and look at the nuances of their mechanics, you can sort of be their pitching coach in the game, which is a really important role to play. So this is just something that you need to observe and try to find the correlations. When you see a certain thing happening and they're always missing over here, you can correlate those two things. When she does this with her mechanics, she tends to miss over here. If she like stays closed too long or opens up too soon, then this starts to happen. Every pitcher is gonna be different, but the more you know about mechanics, the better you're gonna be as a catcher. Number two, understanding your pitcher's personality and demeanor. Do they like positive energy, positive vibes? Do they like aggressive energy? Are they a really like tough, angry sort of competitor? Are they more of one in one scenario versus the other? What do they look like when they're really confident? What do they look like when their confidence is waning and really dropping away? These are important things to understand. When you see body language and you see the intensity or you know the way they react to certain situations change, that's a sign for you to do whatever it is that you do to help calm them down or get them back on track. And we'll talk more about that later. But every pitcher is different so you don't want to approach them all the same way. You know, you could go out there and give a really positive rah-rah talk on a mound visit to one pitcher, and that would really pump them up and be great. You could do that same thing to another pitcher, and they'd be like, get back behind the plate and shut up, because that's not what they want to hear. Observe and try to figure out what's best and how can I keep my pitchers on track using their personality and what I know about them. Number three, as a catcher in fast pitch, you need to know what pitches can they make in which parts of the zone. Every pitcher is different in how good they command this side of the plate versus this side of the plate. Up versus down. You know, obviously they're gonna throw different pitches, but what pitch can they make in a really high pressure situation? And what pitch can they not make in a really high pressure situation? I'll give you an example of this. I was a baseball player, I was a pitcher. I struggled to get the ball inside to lefty hitters. So good catchers for me, they understood this, that even if this was the smart pitch to call, given the, you know, the pitch sequence and whatever, they know that like Dan, he's only gonna make that pitch maybe one out of four tries. And most of the time he's gonna leave that over the plate. So they would say, you know what? That might make sense in theory, but for Dan, I'm gonna go away or we're gonna switch pitches or we're gonna go up. We're gonna pick something that he's better at, better at executing because this one is not one of his good ones that he can execute consistently. And so as a catcher, you need to know what are their strengths and weaknesses and even if your coach is calling the pitches, which I hope they don't, but I assume they probably are, you wanna to try to help your pitcher as much as you can by knowing what pitches they can make, where they're better, where they're not as good, what they can and can't do in different types of situations. And especially at the youth level, where you set up and put your mitt is gonna make a big difference in how well they hit their spot and if they throw a strike or a ball. So if you have a pitcher with excellent command and you wanna pitch away, you might be able to split the outside corner and they're gonna hit that spot a good amount of the time. But for a pitcher with lesser command, and this is something that you need to understand, you might be better off giving them like an outer half target, knowing that they just, they're not as sharp generally, their command's not as good. So this is gonna give them a little more margin to error to work with rather than setting up on the corner for a pitcher like that. So again, not being one size fits all, but trying to work within each pitcher's ability to maximize what they can do. So last thing for softball catchers, let's talk about mound visits. You can have mound visits pretty much whenever you want, right? Like your coach might have an official one and you're gonna go out there with them, but you might run out there for a quick breather, a quick talk, whatever it is. And that's something that good catchers do, intervening with something that they see is wrong that the coach might not see or the coach might not want to address in that situation. And as we mentioned earlier, if you see something wrong with your pitcher's mechanics, and they're falling behind the count or they're struggling, they're, everything's over here and you need to get them back over the plate, run out and have a visit. Tell them, let them know what's going on and you can be like their pitching coach 
for those little moments in the game. That's important. But here's my big advice. You need to know which pitchers like mound visits and which ones don't and which ones like to be talked to a certain way versus another way. I also was a good example of this as a pitcher. I did not like mound visits. And if you were to come out and talk to me, it better be short. It better be to the point. And I didn't want a big pep talk. I didn't want any of that stuff. Tell me what you need to tell me and get away from me. Get back behind the plate. Now, I liked my catchers and I respected them. We worked well together, but that's how I was on the mound. I was an aggressive, sort of confident, but angry kind of pitcher. And I didn't want to chat. I didn't want to have any of that sort of fanfare. I wanted to make my pitch. If you have something important to tell me, come tell me it, but then get back behind the plate. That's my demeanor. Some pitchers, they might really like a confidence boost. They might really like a compliment or something to distract them if they're really frustrated or if they're really, you know, losing their confidence. And you can go up and like give them a pat on the back, so to speak, and give them a little boost. Some pitchers really like to keep their rhythm. And so they don't want to have their rhythm broken by a a one minute pause because you're going to come out there and have a mound visit. And there are definitely some times when there are some chatty catchers who will continue to want to run out and have little mound visits. And it really frustrates a pitcher. So just communicate with your pitchers, you know, in the dugout before the game, ask them what they, they do and don't like. That's why having a good relationship is really important. And then figure out how can you best use mound visits to make your pitcher better. And sometimes that means not having them hardly at all. Everyone's different and you just want to be at your best as a catcher. Again, managing the personalities and the ability levels of your pitching staff. So thanks for watching. Obviously pitching and catching, it's such a really fascinating dynamic in softball. So I hope this video was helpful for you catchers out there and for you pitchers, understanding what you should expect out of your catchers and for you coaches helping to advise your players. I think this is a really important conversation. And I know for me as a pitcher, I had a lot of really wonderful catchers that were really intuitive, sort of good listeners, could pick up on lots of things, were like a secondary pitching coach. And I was really thankful that I had catchers like that to help me along to be my best as a pitcher. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe, check out my online throwing courses, books, resources for mental training and more. And I'll see you here in the next video.